Hello everyone, it is August 10th, 2021. It's Tuesday. It's ARP Tuesday! Welcome to this week's episode. So today I'm just going to be a short, doing a short episode on arpeggios and specifically doing an arpeggio drill uh, using a metronome applet that, that lets you gradually increase the speed. I did a similar episode on rolled chords uh, a couple years ago or something and I've been working, I have a student who's working on arpeggios and this idea of, of using a metronome to, to gradually speed up. I thought it would be a great topic for a Harp Tuesday episode. So I'm going to play this arpeggio. And gradually speed it up with a metronome. And, and you'll have a chance to play along with me then and see um, how, you know, how maybe long you can play with me until maybe it gets too fast, but maybe you can keep going after I have to stop. So. Before I get to that, before we do that, I want to just talk a little bit about arpeggios. And I did an episode many, many years ago about arpeggios, and I think hopefully I said something useful there, so I'll, I'll put a link up here. But chiefly, there, there's a couple things to be aware of with arpeggios. So this arpeggio that we're going to do is an F arpeggio, but starting not with a root four note chord, but with a second inversion. And that's because it can be easy to get used to maybe only doing a C arpeggio, C, finding the C chord, or starting with a root position chord. So I wanted to vary it up a little bit because it's good to be able to do any sort of configuration. And in this case, this is something you can do on a 34 string lever harp. So here's the lowest C, right? C and now F, A, C, F, A, C, F, A, C, F, A, C, F, this would be your top A on a, on a typical 34 string lever harp. Right back down. So we're doing this second inversion F chord, four note F chord with the left hand, then a root F chord with the right hand, first inversion, four note, left hand, and then a second inversion, three note, C, F, A, with the right hand before turning around. And one of the things we want to be aware of when we're doing arpeggios is to think of them as these shapes. So it's not that we're finding one note after another. We're not thinking, right, this is an F chord, so it's gotta be F, A, C, F, A, C, F, A, C, one after another. In this case, the C starts C, F, A, C, C, F, A, C, F, A, C. We want to, in the air, find the shape that we're going to play. So this, and, and there are only those three four note chord shapes, right? So this second inversion that we start with, that's that extra gap between two and three. And so we really want to find that in the air, these fingers equally spaced, these ones, and the fourth finger held out a little bit so that we can just land here. So we have to find the shape and then we have to find the notes. But that way, if we have the shape in there, all we have to do is find the thumb or find the fourth finger or the third finger, the second finger, the rest of the hand. If we get one of these notes correct, all of them will be correct. So we don't have to look for every single note. We can just watch one of these notes and find that. Same with the right hand. This is the root position chord, extra gap between one and two. So four, three, two are the same, that extra gap between one and two, which is particularly easy to find because it's the thumb and the second finger. So it's quite a comfortable shape to find. And here we're creating the extra gap between two and three, right? That first inversion. So trying to find that in the air. And then finally finding this shape with a extra gap between two and three in the right hand, but no fourth finger. And so this type of practice is super helpful for arpeggios so that we find that shape. And so hold, finding the shape in there, and then of course, yes, looking and finding the notes. So again, if we can just look for, for example, if I just have to find this F, maybe this A, it's not that I'm placing it first and then the rest of the notes, but I'm only needing to look at one of those notes because I can find the entire shape. The final aspect of our playing arpeggios I want to talk about before we get into the drill is the fact that turnaround at the bottom of the top is actually one of the most difficult things because here we get a little bit of a pause to go up and find this as the right hand's playing, etc. But here, three, two, we have to turn around or turn around. And that's actually quite quite challenging, um, something to work on on its own. But let's say that you've got this arpeggio feeling pretty good. 
Well, a great way to drill it is to work on it and gradually speed it up. So start at a really nice slow tempo where it feels really loud and solid and, and very even and, 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 and feels good under the hands. And then if you can, kind of sneak that tempo up. So you can do that, of course, the way I did it back in the day, right, was with a metronome and, you know, it's click, click, click. And then every once in a while you turn it up a little bit. But the disadvantage with that is that you're having to do that and take a moment to take the hand away and, and, and change that. Also, you are aware that you've turned it up. So we lose a little bit of that psychological benefit of, oh, this is super slow and easy and not really being aware in the same way of when it gets faster so that it kind of sneaks up on us and we can stay as relaxed as possible. So these days we have lots of metronome apps. And so I'm going to demonstrate with the metronome app that I have. It's called Pro Metronome. Um, I'll put a link in the video description, I guess, uh, to to this. I, I, I have it on iOS. I, I, I'm not actually sure if it's available on Android. I think it is. Um, but something to be aware of that this, what I'm using is called practice mode and you have to pay for that. I believe it's a dollar to unlock this. Um, I'm not affiliated with them. I, I'm not getting any sort of commission or anything, but this was a metronome that um, a viewer recommended to me and it seems to work well. So there may be other options out there and feel free to uh, post in the comments if you've got a great option. But this again, lets us gradually increase the speed. So let me just walk you through sort of the interface here. If you are using Perform Metronome, a couple things I would suggest. If you tap this, uh, let me see. I think I'll hold this up and try and demonstrate here as well as the screen recording. So if you tap this, this will cycle between what is displaying. So all beats, only accents, accents and sub, uh, sub, sorry, I couldn't read that from this angle, sub something. <laughs> oh, and I think, did that just say pendulum? Oh, okay, we got cycle again. Only accents, oh yeah, accents and sub accents, and then finally pendulum mode. And I really like that because we see that swinging back and forth, and that's actually really nice because it gives us a better sense of when the next beat is coming. It's not like, it's, that sense of a uh, ball coming up and down and everything is, is, can be really helpful. Up here, where it says 1-1 one, one right now, I've changed that down. So you, of course, a typical thing might be 4-4, four, four, right? But listen to what, how that sounds. I, I don't, for most of my practice, I don't want a separate sound every four beats. I just want one continuous sound. So I could do one four or one one, both of them will have the same effect of one unified sound. Uh, I think if you click on this little icon over here, that will give you various different sound options. I'm using tone 11. That was the one I ended up liking the best. Uh, great, so then we go down here to this bottom middle icon, which is gives gets us into practice mode, warm up, which I'm gonna ignore, or automator. So using this automator then, we can set uh, how frequently it changes. So right now I've got every four bars, how much it increases, two beats per minute I've got, uh, the starting tempo at 56 at the moment, and max tempo. So I've got 393 just as a, basically it's going to keep going until it's too fast to be able to play with it. Whether physically I can't play with it or maybe just the clicks are coming so quickly together it's just really hard to play with it. So you could also do it by time. So the effect here is that every four bars, it gets a little bit faster, right? It goes from 56 to 58 to 60. But as it does that, right, as it speeds up, two bars go by in time faster and faster. So at, towards the end, those, uh, sorry, four bars, four bars go by very quickly. And so the effect is that it gets faster more slowly at the beginning and it gets faster more rapidly towards the end. I kind of like that, but you don't have to do it that way. You could do it by time. So every X amount of seconds, it will increase. And that will be the consistent increase then. Either one of those are great. So I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna practice. I'm just gonna do this. I'm gonna wear my musician's earplug in my right ear because I'm gonna be playing quite loudly and firmly. And I think that's just good to protect one's hearing. And I'm going to do this as triplets. So I'm going to go one, two, three, click, 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 click. Sorry, every three beats. And with the 
specific number of notes that we're doing in this arpeggio, it means that we will be accenting a different finger on each of these positions each time until after three rotations. So this will be the downbeat, then this will be the downbeat, then this will be the downbeat, I think, or maybe it's this and this. And then finally, that fourth iteration, it'll be back to the click happening on the very lowest note. And I think that can be helpful to get used to doing that. And it's a great way to change the accent so we're accenting all the different fingers instead of going always like four, you know, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, accenting a particular finger. Okay, so let's give it a go. And I encourage you to play along with me. starting to lose a little bit. Again, this is where doing the triplets is a little bit hard because um, rather than being able to say every have it be doing four notes per click, even though that would be faster, I think it would be easier, it would be clearer. The click is coming so fast, I'm having a hard time making sure that I'm with it. Um, but I feel I have room to get faster still. So what I'm gonna do, we're gonna do four notes per click. Whoa. Thank you. 
so you can hear it now at this point again it, it's it's now maybe it'll be different when i listen back but as i'm playing it, it it's getting a little bit hard to feel that i'm actually with the click everything's happening so fast so i'm going to do one last thing i'm going to go back to maybe about that 56 or something uh maybe a tiny bit slower and i'm going to do that as a up and down so this I can feel I'm cheating a little bit with the left hand. I'm not, not really on the way down. Two and three are not sounding as quite as nicely as I would like them to. Um, but anyway, kind of fun, right? And and again, just by doing that, if like if there's a, especially if there's a particular arpeggio in a piece that you're playing that you want to have be really loud and crisp and even, um, doing that o over time is going to be really really beneficial. Um, so I hope that gives you some ideas. Again, if you know a metronome app that allows, allows you to easily gradually increase the speed, I know, uh, I believe it's SoundCourse it does, but I found it wasn't as configurable as, as this pro metronome is. Um, but yeah, let me know in the comments and um, I will see you in two weeks time. <laughs> Cheers.